Harrison children, and when I walked up uh, outside just shedding an army uniform in 1960, I walked here to the church, the first time I'd been in the church, been overseas in Germany, and uh, Sister Marlon and I came here to live to take the church, and there there were these little kids out there, these, uh, <laughs> and uh, they were kin to me, but I'd never been around them, I'd never got to know them, uh, the Harrison children. And the Harrison family. Amen. And of course, uh, the father, Brother Harrison George <coughs> Sr., George Harrison Sr., and Florence, my first cousin, the mother of the children, they had come into the church while I was over in Germany. They had come in and they were here. And it was such a wonderful experience. So, this is the first night in many years that we've had this many of the Amen. family back together. And uh, here she was coming see the Harrison family again, uh, though they've grown up as we all have, but, and uh, some have grown up and some of us, of course, I'm not saying you, <laughs> I'm pointing to me, uh, some of you have, don't have that, some have grown out, some have grown up, uh, but uh, I have been one of those that's grown out and up, but I'm certainly thankful that on my right here is Robin and Sarah. You know, I still remember Patterson. Uh, Sister Robin played in our band here several years, yeah. went to our school, graduated from TCS, yes. and was um, one of the little rascals in the uh, classroom of my daughter. Uh, you know, she put Robin and Paula together and the Chapman girls. Uh, the math teacher resigned five times in one day. <laughs> he said, Brother Marlowe, I can't, I can't handle those girls. And I won't go into all that they were doing, but it was mischievous pranks at their age and time. Uh, but, uh, you know, we, we are happy to have you, Robin, from Portales, New Mexico. You and, and Sarah, and of course, we always think of your husband, David, and, and the rest of the family, your son, and uh, the whole family complete, but then to have Sister Louise Patterson able to be in the service tonight. And again, my memories goes way back. I ministered to the Patterson family in Miami. I had them, uh, Louise was there with me, and Sister Marlowe, the 
church reformed in Miami many years ago, and um, in the bomb shelter there on Biscayne Boulevard. Yes. The hottest place I've ever been in my oh, life. My. It, it was the six feet no of concrete way. over us. It was a bomb shelter. No way. And uh, we found it to have a church in. Uh, and it was built during the Second World War in case they had to go underground in Miami from the bombing because uh, there were uh, Nazi submarines right off Miami Beach in the Second World War, and uh, the Navy blimps were out hunting them. But uh, we got in that bomb shelter, and you just didn't do anything. You just stood still, and perspiration was dripping all yeah, yeah. down uh, because it was a bomb shelter. It a bomb well, it's good to have happy memories and good memories, isn't it? Yes, yes. And uh, memories is that which feeds the soul and makes it uh, so nice to uh, see the homecoming. And we're seeing a homecoming in our churches. Yes, we are. We're yeah. seeing a homecoming. Yes. Yes. Glad yes. to see Brother David Revels back home tonight. Yes. 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 The Lord knew that Brother David Tracy, our sound uh, operator here, went on his vacation. Josh is amply taking care of it back here, his son. Uh, but Josh plays the drums, so we needed a drummer. Yeah. And thank God, Brother David Revels showed up. Praise God. Yeah. Brother David Revels is part of it. We love his sister. Uh, they, they, uh, they, uh, his wife, uh, they, they, they really, uh, Sharon, they really, uh, they may be uh, out on jobs and, and uh, in Jacksonville where their daughters and grandchildren are, but they support this church. They stand behind it, yes, and I'm thankful for it. Praise God. Amen. Then to see all of the rest of you, yes. every one of you over there, my goodness, Brother Adolph, you look like a Philadelphia banker tonight over there. Yes. Praise yes. our God. Yes, thank you. And uh, we're, we're so happy to see all of you and welcome you if you're here for the first time. Uh, we just want you to know that you're not a stranger. You can't be a stranger. Right. You won't be a stranger in this church. That this church loves you. And it's a building church. It's a ruling church. We have tentacles, arms reaching out now. Uh, build a bridge over in Palmetto. So they're not uh, laboring there. And the rest of the church helping the team. And now we have uh, build a bridge in Blackburn Elementary. At 10 in the morning, you want to go to church. At 10 in the morning, go to, over to Palmetto to go to school. Over there, you'll find Build a Bridge going. And if you want to travel 50 miles, be here at 9 o'clock, get in a church van and go to Port Charlotte, where we have the other mission now starting. And so then if you want to be among the bilingual language and speak Spanish a while and, and English a while and both a while, uh, be here at uh, 10 o'clock, and we have the bilingual service in here. Then get through with that, grab a quick chicken sandwich or something, and... Uh, Maybe a hot dog, you know, I'll, 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 they're not good for you, but uh, they do help your morale in many ways. But, uh, <laughs> you know, if you like them. But uh, uh, get back to the church at 2 o'clock. And uh, we start it again in the afternoon at 2, go around 4, and take a break. 6 o'clock, we're back here. Someone said, don't you ever get tired of going to church. No. I don't think so. No. It amazes me that people have been saying, that song, when we've been there 10,000 years, but they can't stand an hour in church down here. Oh, amen. How are they going to handle 10,000 years of that? Amen. You know, amazing grace, how sweet the sound. When we've been there 10,000 years, but they can't stand an hour hardly down here in church. Uh, how are they going to handle that? Now, now think about it. Just think. That makes sense, doesn't it? Uh, praise God. And so uh, we're, we're glad that you're here. And we welcome you, and don't be a stranger. And uh, then I believe we have a young lady here with Brian tonight uh, back there. Uh, and Ash Ashley, is it? Uh, yes, Ashley Burnett. And we're here. Ashley, great to have you. You've been before, haven't you? Yes, you have. And we'd like to have you. And uh, uh, we, we want to welcome, uh, where is where is this Kinzer? Uh, uh, oh, you're right down front. Lorena, we're so happy to see you home from Amen. college and Amen. taking a break for the summer. Uh, you did enroll with SCF while you're down here, didn't you? And uh, they keep you closer home. We're glad you're here. Glad to see you. And we want you to know we love you. 
and we pray for you. Then Sister Patricia, where's uh, granddaughter? Is she here tonight? All right, there. God bless you. We're so glad. Where have you been? Praise God. I almost sent the uh, posse out after you to see about your business. You know, but we're we're glad to see you, and uh, the Lord bless you real good. And we're just going to lift her hands right now. We're going to pray for Sister Sanchez Hernandez. She's back in the hospital tonight, and uh, a lot of pain, uh, but God's going to take care of her. And we'll continue to pray for Shannon, that God will completely heal her, heal her completely. And Shannon has a heart to get back in the house of God. And I want her to be right here. Let's pray. It's good to see Carol. Clintock. We'll pray for Jimmy tonight, Carol, uh, but we're glad to see you. And we, we want to pray for all of God's people. Maybe you have an unspoken name. Who, who has someone on your heart tonight that you want God to remember in prayer? Lift your hands together if you do. And if you have someone, you have a need, and you have a request, uh, so we want you to know that God saw that hand go up. God saw that hand. God read uh, what that prayer was about on your lips and in your heart, and we want to, to pray with you. Sister Eustace. Sister Eustace, uh, now I got what you said. Uh, your niece in New York that uh, is needs prayer. No, her she lost her only son. Oh, she lost her only son. All right. Twenty-one years of age. How brief the candle of life uh, can burn. You know, the candle of life does not burn very long sometimes. Uh, all right, let's pray for that mother. I know she's grief stricken. Uh, tonight. Uh, Jamie. I actually have one. I just found out uh, my friend Phil is uh, yeah, cancer. Get him the mic there, brother Michael. I can't. I can't pick him up. 34, and he just found out he's, uh, he didn't tell me, but I found out from a different person that he has cancer. Oh, my. So to, uh, if you guys can keep him in prayer. Phil. 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 That's his name. All right. Well, that, that strike, that word cancer, Strikes a certain tone with all of us, oh, doesn't it? All right, there's another request. Uh, Brother Mark over here in the aisle. Uh, oh, right uh, for my wife, she on going to Haiti Monday. Uh, Brother Mark St. Jean's wife is going back to Haiti, and she goes back and forth from the country here. Uh, the children are there, her uh, husband's here. Let's pray that God will go with her Amen. and be with her and watch over her. Praise God. Amen. Amen. The mother with the three pound, two ounce uh, uh, baby, uh, just say, Lord, bless the mother, the child. Uh, all right, praise God. And there's many, many other needs I know in a congregation like this and across the, the world, the needs God sees. We're going to pray together. If you want to join us right now, we're going to rise up from a time of prayer. Or you can kneel, you can sit. Uh, prayer is not a position, it's a conversation. Uh, so however you pray right now, if you pray verbally, silently, uh, right now let's all enter into prayer. Uh, every one of us, deep prayer. Go to God right now in the name of Jesus. Lord, we come before you and we say in Jesus' name, uh, would you reach down and would you touch the people and would you help the people and would you look upon the needs of, of the church tonight, not only the church, but families that are interrelated with the church. And we pray, Lord, that you would not just touch the families of the church and the friends and our special needs. And yes, Lord, remember uh, the niece in New York that lost her only son, Sister Eustace's request. And, uh, Lord, remember uh, Jamie's request, the old discovering cancer. Uh, Lord, every unspoken need tonight, and uh, a mother with a child. Oh, God, remember 
everyone that has any need in their life, those that are traveling, those that are away, and then remember the tragic, stricken people uh, that may be in our city and in our nation, and guide us, Lord. We can't go without you, uh, Sister Santos in the hospital. Every need of the nursing home, every need of the aged and the afflicted and the young and our nation and the direction it would be taking and the government that leads us. Oh God, tonight we pray for mercy, uh, we pray for strength, and we pray that you would hear not vain empty words, but words inspired by the Holy Spirit. Go with this congregation tonight. Thank you for Shannon being with us, Lord. And we pray that you will heal and deliver her completely. Uh, Lord, touch the Harrison family, every living member of them. Uh, touch them. Uh, be with Brother Jim McClintock tonight, Lord. Every need of your people, everyone that's seen and unseen, we pray in the name of Jesus for the body of Christ and for the family of God. In Jesus' name, who died for us on the cross and rose again for our sanctification. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord and praise the Lord. Amen. 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 You may be seated for a moment. And I would ask that the ushers prepare to receive our offering right now. Assemble in the back of the church. Get ready to receive our Saturday night offering. And may God give, bless you as you give unto the Lord tonight. God loves a cheerful giver. God loves a bountiful giver. God loves a giver. So may you give tonight whatever God has blessed you with, whatever God has given you, and whatever the Lord has placed in your hands. You will not fail God by giving him that which belongs into the giving of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Before we receive the offering, Lisa and Bill, right over here to my right, I didn't get to meet you. Uh, I may have met you before, I meet a lot of God's family. But tonight, your smiling faces tell me yes. you love God, and we're so happy you're here at the church. We got to know you, and uh, this place is just a family. We have no membership here. When you walk through that door, you're a part of us. And uh, God brought you here, and we count him the administrator of the church. Praise our God. May the Lord bless you. Really. All right, are you ready? Brethren, in the back, give them a moment. All right, you may begin the music. Praise God. Praise God.
God's people gives and gives and gives. And thank you for giving of that all of us know, none of us could give, outgive our Jesus. He gave more than I could ever give. And what little I can give him on this earth uh, is very, very little. I feel, uh, Sister Marlowe, would you back me up a little bit and you can there, there's a mic, or you can come here, you can do it there if you wish. Um, uh, Stuart Hanlon's song, There's a Cross. Uh, I, I sing mostly three songs in my life, and I sing them over and over and over again. Praise God. There's a cross for everyone to bear, and there's a heaven for each soul to share. There's a place in heaven waiting me. I may got it through his death and Calvary. Each drop of
people, the greatest comfort you can give them is God's Word. Yes. And for a few minutes, that's what I'll do. Amen. And then I'll watch what the Lord does with the rest of the church. Amen. And the rest of these preachers Amen. are just sitting here uh, so full of the Word of God. Oh. And the glory of God upon them. Yes. Praise God. Yes. And the anointing of the Lord all around. Oh, yes. And these singers that's all around me tonight, and these praise warriors that have their hands already in the air, praising him, and blessing him for what he's done, praise the name of the Lord, and for a congregation that's blood-bought, sanctified by the power of the Holy Ghost. Amen. How many is glad tonight for old times, sky blue, real true, Holy Spirit filled, worship in the house of God. Well, you were, you were, you, you just didn't quite get your vitamins, I see that. But uh, I said, how many is glad for old times, old things, Holy Spirit filled, church, not a shame, not a shame. You've been with about 20 of us on the streets of Bradenton last night when we invaded the downtown section of Bradenton and we got out of those vans and we got into the parking lot of Bravo Food Market and you've been with us and watched us cornering people with brochures and praying with people and asking God to help people and I'm not talking about all together the upper crust of the city. No. I'm talking about people that are having it rough and hard. Yes. I'm, uh, the reality of life is right now, there are thousands of people homeless in America. Oh, There's drug people everywhere. Yes. There are people that are on drugs, they're selling drugs, uh, and you get out on the streets where we were last night, and you'll find out that it isn't all the glass and the chandeliers. It's people that are struggling to live, struggling to even remember their name. Some of them not sure of what street they're on. Some of them not sure if they're sitting up against a building or not. I spoke with one man. I said, uh, would you like me to pray with you? And he said, I just got out of prison. And he said, I have no money. And I have no place to sleep tonight. And uh, he said, what do you say to that? I said, Jesus Christ can help you. He said, you have some money to give me to help me. I said, I don't have any money right now. But I didn't come here with, just to give you money. I came here to tell you about a Savior that can change your life and change your direction. And he said, all right, would you pray with me then? That God will help me. And down on his knees he went in the sand and dirt of the, of the house where he came from there. And right around him was one man, and he had been drinking heavily. There were two more over here that were looking with glazed eyes like they had uh, no recognition of where they were. And I looked at that scene, and I thought, what would Jesus do if he were here? He would fret out his arms to them. Yes, he, would. he would love them in spite of the perspiration, in spite of the odors, in spite of the fact their clothes were not clean, in spite of the fact their breath was not good, uh, the stubble on their face, uh, and all the rest that goes to living yes. in the streets. Yes. He would have prayed with them. Yes. And I, we began to pray, and I was proud of our church. Yes. About 20 of us were all like ants working across that uh, street. Finally, a security guard came out of the market and said, uh, you can't do that here. He said, you just can't do that here. And I thought, you would think that he would want somebody to convert the right. shoplifters right. going in the market. Right. And you know, we might spare, we might uh, make the difference in his economy of his market uh, by ministering to them in Christ and uh, the people going in and out. But he said, you can't do that here. And I looked at that and I told the people around me, America is not friendly to the church in the streets. America doesn't know they need 
the church in the streets. They don't know that they need more than those groceries in that market. America needs salvation right now. I said America needs salvation. America needs to be saved. America needs to repent of their sins. The people that are in the streets, they need Jesus Christ to change their life, to change their life, to give them hope. Praise our God. And uh, dear Sister Sherry, she was with us, and Bob, uh, she said, Brother Marlow, I just realized we parked right across the street from where my nephew, right? My nephew has just opened a hot dog business. And I said, I, I'm going across that street, and I'm going to tell him that he needs Jesus Christ, and I'm going to pray with him. And we went across the street, dodging the traffic, uh, getting over there, and he, he, Rob, Rob Williams, is that his name? Uh, he, Rob just said, oh, preacher, I'm so glad to have you. I just opened this business. I'm working from 11 to 11, seven days a week. I, I said, but will you pray with me right here that God will bless this business and help me? And I had prayer with the hot dog uh, owner of the hot dog market. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. How many believe that there's a reality in serving God? And this church, this church is going out of these walls. Yes. This church is going to touch people in this city. This church is not going to just enjoy the, pew, uh, the, the padded pew we sit on, but we're going to introduce Jesus Christ to the lost and dying, to the hopeless and the helpless, to those that have nothing. But I believe you can have everything when Jesus comes into your life. I said, I believe you can have everything. So I'm going to disturb you a little bit from here on out. I'm not going to let you sit there and just act like flash laid back people in those seats, those leather chairs, and those padded pews, and, and this air conditioning, and this beautiful building that we're in. Because just outside of this are the helpless and the hopeless and those that are bound in sin, drugs, uh, habits, uh, oppression, depression, and every other pressure. But I believe there's a living Christ for a dying world. Please the name of the Lord. I believe there's a living Christ for a dying world. I'm not a religious soothsayer to just tell you that you're better than you think you are. Uh, that you can just think your way out of sin. That you can just think your way out of the trap you're in. No, there's only one way to get up out of sin, Amen. out of evil, Amen. out of darkness, uh, out of depression, yes. out of drugs, out of alcohol, yes. out of tobacco, yes. out of gambling, yes. out of profanity, yes. out of pornography, yes. and out of lust. Yes. There's only one answer, and it's the cross yes. and the man called Jesus. Yes. I say it's the cross. Yes. And it's the blood. Let's bring the blood back in the church. Let's bring the cross back in the church. Let's bring the power of the Holy Ghost back in the church. Praise the name of the Lord. I believe. I believe. I went back across the street and we and they said, you can't stay here. I said, well, we'll just move the vans two streets up. And uh, we occupied the corner on 17th and 14th. And everywhere we went, there was needs, and people were lonely and lost and afraid and sad and sick and blue. Praise God. So we know that today, as never before, that people need Jesus Christ and his love and his mercy, and they need his help. Praise the name of the Lord. I want to dwell a few minutes on uh, Psalms 23. The scripture said, the Lord is my shepherd and I shall not want. It's a wonderful thing when the church just feels that they're near their shepherd and their shepherd is near them and that they find the pathway to where he is and will be and where the sheep graze and where the sheep come together where the sheep feed and where he provides the feeding place, the feeding grounds for the sheep to dwell there, to rest there, Amen. to abide there for a season, and he moves them to greener pastures. 
leads them to where they continually are fed and they drink to quench their thirst. And David was a shepherd, of course. And he's talking from his experience. But it's another being personified through the words of David. Christ is speaking to the church through David. David produced this psalm for those to enjoy in his day. And he was very good at what he said. And he, like an artist, he painted a picture. And they were able to understand this psalm because uh, David was so graphic in his illustration. And sometimes I feel that the church needs to bridge the gap between words that are said and words that are meant. And they, they, they need to see what is being said, to hear what's being said. But then they need to understand that the message that's coming to them is leading them from one place to another, giving them one experience of a, to another of the Lord in their hearts and their lives. And um, you see, all the preaching in the world will never do anything for you or anything for me. I could listen to hours and hours and hours. I could read over and over again. But unless there is, unless there is some way that I can connect with the reality of the words that are being said, and it can become more than the page I'm looking at Amen. with the ink and the words uh, on the page. But it becomes living word in my spirit. Yes, living word. And it translates itself oh, yeah. into changing me yeah. and giving me a direction from where I am to where I need to be. Yes. Giving me a, a place to be lifted by the Lord's spirit and by his word. And so as we read Psalms 20, I want to dwell on it a few minutes. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Now if I believe that, I believe that. If I believe it only because it's spoken for the moment, it will do me little or no good because I don't really believe that I shall not want. I know I read it. The minister said it. Uh, I heard it. I read it alone in my room. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. But deep inside of me, it isn't connected. And so therefore, I, you know what a person does that it doesn't find their appetite satisfied? They go and look for something else. If their thirst is not quenched, they go and look for something else. They're seeking to have their appetite satisfied. We're made like that. We're created like that. That's in us as um, children of God. That's inside of us. And um, we, we, we know that, um, that he said, the Lord is my shepherd and I shall not want. I believe tonight if he is my shepherd and he is, and he's the church, the shepherd of the church, I'm the under shepherd of Christ serving you as God gives me that privilege and chance, but he's the great shepherd. Yes. Never mistake the under shepherd for the great shepherd. Right. Because in the house of God, you have the under shepherd, which is the gift of God to the church, a pastor, one who watches for your soul, one who watches out uh, for the direction you're going spiritually, who seeks to feed you the word, allow the spirit to move, uh, be there to tend the sore, the wound, bind up the grieving spirit, the under shepherd, the tangible person that you see, one of your own that's redeemed as you are, washed in the blood as you are. But then the great shepherd is Christ. Yes, right. And never forget that no matter who may fail, he will never fail. Never fail. Right. He Amen. shall never fail. Never will. Remember that the great shepherd will never cease to lead the sheep. Right. I'm mortal. I have an existence. I have a time of birth, a time of death. I'll lead as an under shepherd as long as the Lord provides me strength and mentality and, and the wisdom and the ability to minister his word and the anointing to uh, give what God gives to me. 
But the great shepherd is not for a season. He leads you along, yep. some through the water, some through the fire, yes. but the Lord is my shepherd. See, David said, the Lord is my shepherd. Now, David was a shepherd, but David knew he had a shepherd. Yes. And that shepherd the was the great shepherd. Yes. And the great shepherd, Christ, yes. never, never leaves the church. Right. No matter what they're going through, Amen. what they're enduring, right. what they're experiencing, no matter what sickness you go through, if even the under-shepherd cannot even be there, for any reason, he might not be there. But the great shepherd is always there. Yes. He's Amen. there when the fever is 105. Right. He's there when the fever drops. Yes. Yes. He's there when you're hurting so bad that you can't tell anybody. And if you told them, you couldn't express how much pain you have. He's there when you're low in your spirit and, and you feel those inward pains of loneliness and fear and doubt and depression that we feel as human beings on this earth, um, he's there. He's there with us. He never leaves us. He never forsakes us. He never goes apart from us. He's the great shepherd. Sometimes I think we need to stop everything we're doing and to praise him and say, thank you, Lord, for being my great shepherd. Hallelujah. Have you felt like doing that recently? Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Well, I'm going to do it right now. Thank you, Lord, for being my great shepherd. Praise the name of the Lord. You know who you know who really stopped that car that may have crashed into your car? It wasn't a human force. It was God through his son, the great shepherd. You know who turned back? Sister Shannon, you know who will turn back the illness that you're dealing with? It will not be in the end. In the end, they will contribute. They have contributed. Those that have prayed, the doctor and the doctors and the nurses, thank God for them and the treatment they're giving you. But in the end, that, that isn't who is never going to leave you right, nor forsake you. Oh, but the shepherd is never Come going on. to leave Amen. you Amen. nor forsake you. Amen. Say it with me. The Lord is my shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd. And tonight, if you if you get this message, that I'll be dwelling on a few minutes here. I'm not going to be very lengthy and, and standing here. But if you get and the Holy Spirit transmits the words I'm saying, with the anointing of the Holy Ghost, and it comes into your heart, and you turn away from the negative things of this life, and you turn yourself away from the doubt and the fear that you're not going to make it, that you've been forsaken, that you don't know where your next help is coming from, and all of a sudden you say in your spirit, the Lord is my shepherd. Yes. I shall not want. You mean, what does that mean? It means exactly what David said. Yes. David said, the Lord is my shepherd. Now, David did not have one of his sheep that David did not take care of. When, when um, Samuel came to anoint the sons of Jesse, and David wasn't there. And uh, finally, he had exhausted himself, Samuel had, in praying with the rest of Jesse's sons. And none of them was to be king of Israel. None of them were to be anointed as the king of Israel. And Samuel knew it. And Samuel said, do you have any other sons? Is there any other sons in this house? Because, uh, because Samuel knew that God led him to Jesse's house and knew the king of Israel was to come from that house. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. Are you getting what I'm saying? Praise our God. How many believes when God leads you, God leads you? How many believe that God doesn't lead you astray? That he has a purpose for you. He has a place for you. He has a destination for you. He has hope for you. He has joy for you. He has peace for you. And in the end, you'll come out of the tunnel and you'll stand on Mount Zion 
and shout victory is mine. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. And finally he said, do you have another? And Jesse said, yes, I have one. But you know where he was? He was taking care of the sheep. He was a shepherd. A shepherd is different than anything else on earth. A shepherd cares with compassion and love, and he would lay down his life for the sheep. He would stand between the wolf and the sheep. He doesn't have a casual relationship. He is bound to the sheep. He has a smell of sheep on him. He circles himself at night with the sheep. He sleeps with the sheep. He walks with the sheep. He lives with the sheep. Praise our God. Praise our God. Now the under shepherd will do that. A man of God, truly called, not elected, not hired, but sent by God. He will do that. You know how you can tell a man of God from a professional preacher? I'll tell you real quick, children of God. A man that isn't called of God has no smell of the sheep upon him. He cares not in the midnight hour when they're burning with fever. If they call him, he'll put them on hold till the next morning. He'll tell them he's in bed. He can't get up. It's past his hour. But a true shepherd of God will get out of bed at two, three, four, one, and go to where the hurting and the wounded are. Praise the name of the Lord because he has the smell of sheep upon him. A shepherd is not a casual observer of the suffering of one human being. He feels the pain and the hurting of anyone around him. If they're afraid, he wants to take that fear from them. If they're hurting, he wants to stay there until the hurting is gone. If they're lonely, he wants to see them comforted because the shepherd is that given gift of God that God placed in the church. Praise the name of the Lord. Now we'll leave that part. I'm going to the part David is speaking about here. He said, but the Lord is my shepherd. See, the Lord is my shepherd. And tonight, above this position I hold, thank God I am privileged to hold it, but there is, there is a great shepherd yes, is. above all of the church. Amen. And everybody here tonight Amen. should lift your head up. Yes. You should lift your heart up. Yes. You should lift your spirit up. Yes. This church should not go from here, from here like beggars going out in the night. Amen. You are rich beyond anything you know. Amen. You have a caring shepherd that will get in the car with you, that will go to your home tonight, will be there with you in the darkest moments of the night because the Lord is our shepherd. Amen. David said, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. I don't believe that a child of God will want for anything too long before the shepherd provides it. Oh, yes, I believe if I need anything, oh, God will provide it. Yes, he will. I believe tonight if I am sick, he can provide healing. Amen. Right. I believe if I'm, if I'm afraid, he'll provide me confidence. Yes. I believe if I need anything yes. in the future, right. he will show up. Yes. I believe he'll be there when no one else is there. I believe he'll be there when I call Amen. and perhaps no one heard me call. Amen. But he heard me call yes. and he'll be there. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. Give him a praise offering tonight. Amen. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Praise God. I shall not want. I believe the Lord has already put in store the next blessing for this church, Amen. the next miracle for this church, Amen. the next step for this church, Amen. the next anointing for this church, Amen. the next vision for this church. Amen. I believe God already has in your locker what you need if you'll trust him and believe that you will never be hungry, you'll never be in want, you'll never be in need because somewhere if you call upon your shepherd, 
He'll show up and he'll be there. Praise the name. In fact, I feel right now the Lord is going to help you, Shadow. You're suffering back there. And I see that. Praise the name of the Lord. I'm going to stop ministering. I'm going to lift my hand toward you. And I'm going to say in the name of Jesus, Lord, touch that. Touch that child. Touch that child. In the name of Jesus, touch that child. Lord, minister to her. And while you're ministering to her, minister every other person. Because the Lord is our shepherd. And we shall not want. Praise the name of the Lord. If you'll put your trust in him, your future is in him. If you'll put your trust in him, he'll move the mountain. If you put your trust in him, he'll make the way. If you'll let him be your brother, your giver, your healer, your baptizer, your provider, he'll take care of you. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Take your whole life tonight. If you're a young woman, if you're a young man, if you're a middle-aged person, if you'll say, Lord, I'm reversing all my plans for the future. I'm going to cast aside everything I wanted to do. I'm going to plan, I'm going to throw my plans up in the air tonight. Lord, burn my plans up. Burn my adventures up of life. Take my journey I've planned out. I am throwing it all in the garbage can. I'm giving it up. I want you to be my shepherd. I want you to take my hand. I want you to lead me. I want you to bless me. I want you to provide for me. I want you to move the mountain. I want you to help me get across the river. I want you to help me get past the obstacle. I believe tonight is my night to commit myself to my shepherd as he's committed himself to me. Praise the name of the Lord. I believe I shall not want Say that with me right now. I shall not walk. I shall not walk. I can feel the Holy Spirit dealing with people all across this building right now. He'll take every plan you have, every ambition you have, every desire you have, and put it in the garbage can. And say this night, before this night is over, whether I do it where I'm sitting, whether I come here and pray, whether I pray before I leave at the altar, I'm committing my life, not to me, not to those around me, not to those who plan for me, not to those who chart my course, not to those who have said you need to go this way and you need to go this way, and this is the way you're going the rest of your life. I'll reverse it tonight for Jesus Christ. The great shepherd said I shall not want I shall not want. That's a promise. The great shepherd. I can't make that as an under shepherd. I'll do everything I can for you. But David said, the Lord is my shepherd. And I shall not want. The church needs tonight see that the great shepherd has already planned the greatest revival we've ever known in the church. Planned the latter rain. Planned the millennium for us. Plan the coming of, uh, of his son, Jesus Christ. Lord. Plan the return of the miracles of God in the church, the yes. dead being raised, yes. the blinded eyes being opened. Yes. Praise the name Amen. of the Lord, yes. the lame walking. Yes. Did you know he's already planned your next loaf of bread yes. that's going in your pantry? Yes. Do you know he's already planned your next tank of gas yes. that you're going to have? Do you know he's planned already your next week you're going to live? Amen. You know, he has planned already your next uh, goal you're reaching for. If we'll let go of the rope of life and take the ladder that's reaching into heaven itself with the promises of God, you will leave this place tonight a changed person. Never to be the same. Never to be like your word. Praise the name of the Lord. I'm going to do something I've never done in all my years of preaching. I'm going to ask everyone in here that dares to ask the Holy Spirit to come upon you right now. If you have that faith, if you believe that God is in this place and that the Lord is your shepherd and you shall not want, I'm going to ask you if you have that courage, if you believe that God, the moment you lift your hand and surrender and say, Lord, I put my future, I put my life 
I put my existence uh, into your hands. Uh, now, Holy Spirit, come upon me and let me be washed in the blood uh, and forgiven of my sins uh, and my sins be cast from me. Praise the name of the Lord. If you have, if you have that faith right now and you lift your hands uh, and you believe right now that God is present in this place uh, to help you to change your life, to give you a new direction, give you a new purpose to plan your life. Remember, you can plan your life, but you may not plan it so it's successful. You can plan your life, but it may not come out like you're planning it. But there's one that you can put your hand in the hand of God, and God can change every obstacle ahead of you. God can move every everything there is Every mountain can be made low. Every valley can be brought up. Praise the name of the Lord. What you were yesterday, you'll never be that again. Praise our God. What you have been, you'll never be again. Praise the name of the Lord. Where you're going will never be the place you're going again. God wants to change life here tonight. Praise the name of the Lord. Because uh, he is our great shepherd. Praise our God. Hallelujah. I want you to strike the, uh, I want to sing a verse of that song just to let the spirit have his way. That's all I'm going to say. I'm going, I'm through with the ministry of the word. Praise our God. When he reached down his hand for me, I was lost and undone without God or his son. Remember the great shepherd is here tonight present. We shall not mourn. Amen. He knows who we are. He knows what we are. He knows where we are. Sister Mary Thompson. I just got a, a text from, from um, Sheila Cobb. She's on the way to the hospital. So she'd like us to pray for her. Right, we'll pray for Sheila Cobb. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. She's on her way to the hospital. Yeah. We'll pray as we sing. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. The power of that message, the power of those words. No. Now before we say, the Spirit check me, and I have to read. I can't. I can't just. I have to read the rest of it. I'm not going to minister on it, but I, I cannot let you be without the full effects of what God wants to do for you tonight. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. There are people here tonight that have plans made, and those plans will never come to pass. Because those plans are not anchored in Christ. They're not placed in the Master's hand. There's people here tonight that needs a great dramatic reverse of every decision they're making. And tonight, God can change it forever, and you can be a new creation. Praise the name of the Lord, if you believe, if you have faith, if you have trust in God. All right? The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. He gave not walk to the valley of the shadow of death. I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup. My cup. Surely goodness. Hallelujah. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Holy Ghost wants to fall on you right now and change your life forever and ever. Let's sing a verse of that. Praise God. 
Lord is good.
could have done any more in his connection with us as God to the church than to let this service be just exactly as it was. Because it's what God wanted, or otherwise it would not have been. But God provided. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not walk. And I believe tonight that God has so touched your need, Shannon, and your need, uh, Jose, and your need, Rebecca. Praise God. And all the ones that came, and all the ones that said, Lord, help. And I believe before the weekend is through, if you'll not doubt, no matter what your name is, who you are, yes. what you need, that God will provide. Amen. That's how great Amen. our God is. Amen. Amen. Uh, we are thankful that the Lord came in tonight yes. and yes. refreshed us and watered Amen. us and led us by the living waters, by the uh, still waters. Praise God. Leadeth me beside the still waters. And tomorrow is a beautiful day. I'm so anxious to hurry through the night. I I really don't want to. I wish I could wish it were about 10 o'clock. Time to start getting back to church again. Right? Praise God. Just get through the night. Get through the night. I'm a person that I don't, I, I, I like for the day to be there. I like to be doing something. I, 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 I don't like to lie in bed for some reason. I, I like to get up and go. Praise God. Amen. Amen. So hurry, Lord, and hurry us through the night. He will. And we'll be back tomorrow, and we'll be trying to see what God if you anticipate the tomorrow for God and for him to be there and for you to be doing his work, tomorrow cannot be dull. It cannot be boring. No. It cannot be listless. Uh, some the people, sunshine. the reason their days are blah, blah. Their days are blah, you know. The reason it is is because they don't anticipate the Lord and what he can do with them and for them and through them. But if you anticipate tomorrow as being a day, what will God do for me? What miracle will he give me? What will he do for me? Then tomorrow is going to be a beautiful day. Praise the name of the Lord. And everybody said, Praise the Lord. Thank you, Lord. And thank you, Lord. And I'll see you all tomorrow. Praise God. By the grace of God. Sleep a little while, rest a little while, get a little breakfast, hurry back. It won't be long till 10. And then to praise God. It's an exciting day tomorrow. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, you never looked as good as you do right now. Praise God, you never looked as good as you do.